Hey, what's up? How you doing? Recently, I filmed a day in my life video as a news producer. If you haven't seen that and you're interested in news producing, which I'm assuming you are because you clicked on this video, I recommend checking that one out. I'll link it up above. So like for the first part of this video, I'm just going to kind of walk through what I do in a day in a little bit more detail than I showed in that video. And then I'm just going to give some general news producer tips for if you're interested in this job and you are just looking for some like general tips about producing news. So let's get into it. All right, so I actually have a changing schedule all the time. I do not produce the same shows every single day. I switch around quite often. So I've produced a lot of the shows that we have at the station. I've produced the 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 10 p.m. and 11 and the 6.30 on the Sundays that we have 6.30 shows. So I've produced every single day side and night side show. The only stuff that I haven't touched are the morning shows. So I don't have like one set show that I do every single day or two set shows that I do every single day. It switches a lot, but my shows on the weekends are always the same. So I'm gonna kind of use those as an example. It's just my weekdays that are always different. Let's say a Saturday, I go into the station and the first thing I need to start producing is the six because I also have the 10 and 11 that I have to produce later that night. But first things first, I gotta do the six o'clock show. So I go in, sit down at my desk, and then I look through our day plan for the day that has been emailed out by the assignment desk person from that morning. Then I go through, see what stories my reporters are gonna be on that day and see what Vosot my photographers are out getting. It's a little bit different in on the weekdays because we have editorial meetings where we talk about what the reporters are gonna be doing. And back before Corona, the reporters would actually all pitch three stories and we would sort of pick as a newsroom the stories that we wanted each reporter to be on for that day. But because of Corona, that's not happening. And on the weekends, we don't have editorial meetings anyway. Things have already been predetermined for the weekends the day before. So anyway, once I see what my reporters and photographers are getting for the day, then I go into our rundown. I make the rundown, which is literally just the thing that all of the stories are in. It is what I build the show inside of. We, for the longest time, used a software called Opus, but we actually just switched to EMPS, which is a more industry standard rundown software. So I go in there, I launch my rundown, and I start plugging in the slugs, which is just the weird word that we use for the title of the story. I slug out my reporter stories and my photographer stories in the rundown and I time it out. And then I go in and I start looking at all of our different sources. We have CNN and CBS and this thing called Mastercat, which is Scripps, the company that I work for. That's like where they drop all of their content for like shared across all of Scripps stations. On the weekends, we don't really get uh, content from Scripps. So I don't really go on the weekends to Mastercat, but on the weekdays I do. So I look for what the big national story of the day is, and then I will usually run a CNN or CBS package on that topic. Then I will look in our, what we call day book, which is where we have everything listed out as far as local stuff that's going on. So when we get emails of press releases or any sort of events, you can just scroll through your email and look for them, but it can like take a while, especially because we get hundreds of emails every single day. Instead of just scrolling through those, the assignment desk person will also put those into Datebook and we can go and look through those and I'll go and check to see if there's any stories locally that I can write up, plug in to the show. So I'll do that for local content. We get Associated Press, literally so many sources that I just go through and just find stories to fill up the show. The shows on the weekends are 30 minutes long. Some of the shows during the week are an hour, so it just depends on the day. But on the weekends, the six o'clock that I'm doing, it's 30 minutes. I'll go through and I will slug out every single story that I'm going to do for that day and time it all out so that I can fill up my entire rundown with all of the content planned out that I want. And then once I have it all planned out, I will then go in and start writing every single story. Sometimes there's just not a lot going on and I can't fill up the entire rundown right away. I might still have like a minute left I need to fill, but I'm sort of like running out of time because especially on the weekends, I only have about three hours to put together at the six o'clock, which is not a lot of time. So, once it starts to hit about like four o'clock, if I haven't started writing anything yet and I still need to find stories, I'm just like, whatever. I just move on. I leave that minute and I just go and start writing and then I'll go back later and see if any new stories have dropped because most likely some have or someone will get shot and I'll put that in the show or a car accident or something will come in like right before my show. That always happens. And uh, I'll have to switch up my A block anyway to accommodate that. So usually if I'm a little bit late, 
it's not a huge deal. But then I go through and I start writing every single story. Inside of a story, you're gonna obviously write it. You also have to put the anchor read in there to sign it to the anchor. And you also have to make a graphic and you have to put a source in for your editors to know what video to plug in. And you have to put the cue for the director, whether it's a VO, a package, a saw, a saw bow, a nat bow, whatever it is, you put that in there as well so that the director knows what to do. Making graphics is pretty simple. Um, but that is also something that the producer is in charge of, so you just go in and make that little lower third that you see with every single news story at the bottom of the screen. You just write something for that um, that correlates to the story. So finding and writing stories is what takes the biggest chunk of time out of my day. Um, once I've gotten all of that done, the next thing to go through is your show opens and your teases. And that is when you know you like first turn on the news and it's like, Welcome to news three at six o'clock, blah, blah, like that whole thing. And at the very start, there's like video and the anchor is reading some sort of like pre-show tease. Like tonight, we'll be taking you on a news three exclusive through the Norfolk jail and how they're handling coronavirus. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not a very good show open, but you know what I'm talking about. Those things, I write those. And then I'll go through and I'll write the teases as well. So, you know, when you get to the end of a, a block and it's right before break and like, uh, have you ever wanted to teleport? Well, a company in LA is working on that technology. That's coming up. I don't, that is a fake tease, obviously, but that thing, the whole coming up on, you write something to make the person want to stay. That's actually one of the hardest things about being a producer is writing teases. After a while, you get it down and you can write them quickly, but at first, I would say it is one of the biggest struggles because it goes against our nature, I think, as producers, because we just want to tell the story quickly, like that's our job, and teasing is making somebody want to stay for the story, but not giving out any actual information on it it's kind of difficult and it's a skill you just kind of have to cultivate over time. Anyway, so I write the teases and then eventually, um, usually about an hour before the show, the reporters will start sending back their scripts. Normally managers will approve those scripts, but on the weekends, the managers don't, the anchor does. Um, and then once that's done, I plug those scripts into the rundown, put the lower thirds and the name supers in there. And then that pretty much covers everything that I have to do before the show. Go back through and proofread if you have time, that's important. Um, but usually anchors or managers, depending on who's there, can be a second set of eyes to go through and check everything and approve everything. But that's pretty much everything in order to get the show together. And then once it's done, I freeze the rundown, which means just like locking all of the numbers in place. So if I have to kill a story, it, and like it doesn't change the number of the layout, it all stays the same. And I go back in the booth and I talk to my director, I talk to my anchors, my meteorologist, all that, and I just go through and watch the show and make sure that everything goes smoothly. If we have breaking news, I write it in the booth. Um, I count down the meteorologists when they're doing their weather hits. Um, if we have a live shot, I communicate with the live reporter out in the field and tell them when to go and tell them how much time they have left and when to stop and all that stuff. Boothing is kind of different every time because there's usually different stuff that's happening that you have to work with during the show. And I just keep time during the show. So if we're heavy for some reason and I go through and I find kind of a lesser important story and I kill it out to help with our time. If we're a little bit light for some reason, I have to figure out a way to make sure that we fill the entire time. If there's a technical issue or something that could happen where like a package just doesn't play or a saw just doesn't play or something that can make us very light and I have to figure out during the show how I'm going to make up that time and keep things going. If there's if this is something that happens that's frustrating is when a reporter misses slot or something just goes wrong with a package and they just can't get it in on time. Um, if that package is coming up and the video asset is not loaded into the rundown, then that package is not gonna play and we will just have dead air. So I have to move around that package in hopes that it comes in and if it doesn't, I have to make up the like minute and a half to two minutes of content that that package was supposed to fill, just depending on you know, errors that happen. So that's fun. Or really fun if there is some sort of cut-in that we're doing or some sort of special thing that's happening, which has happened so much with coronavirus. Um, and we start the show late because we're in like a White House press conference or with like weekends, a lot of times we'll start later because we'll be doing friggin' golf. Golf is the bane of my existence. It will go late. It won't, It's not like a set thing. It ends when the final golfer has gotten their ball in the hole, you know, like, and when it ends, sometimes we don't have a show at all. 
So I'll prepare an entire six o'clock show, but golf will take up that whole 30 minutes and we won't even go on at all. Or sometimes they'll take 15 minutes and we'll go on at 6.15 and I have to figure out how to condense this 30 minute long show and all of our breaks into now a 15 minute show while at the same time getting all the breaks in that I can because we make our money from our breaks. So that's not fun at all, but it's part of producing. But then once I'm done with the show, I write up something called the QCR, which is just where I go in and I say if we hit our meters, which is when you go out and to break at a certain time, like in the six o'clock, we were supposed to be in the show at 6.15. So if my A block goes too long and we go into a break and then we don't come back until 6.16, we missed a meter. So I have to go in, say if we made all our meters, I have to say some good things about the show and then I have to say if we had any problems or technical issues throughout the show. And then that's it. That is my job. And then once I'm done with the six, of course, then I have to do the 10 and then I have to do the 11. So it's a process, but that is a show. That's what goes into it. Now I'm just gonna go into some general tips that I have found. Um, as a producer for the last nine months, I guess. First things first is to know your market. You cannot be a solid producer if you do not understand what people in your area want to see because that's kind of our point is to put together a good show that people are going to want to watch. So if you're running a show and you have zero idea what is important locally to your people, you might put something as like your lead story that is not nearly as important as something that you put down in like the C block. For example, I live in Norfolk, Virginia, which is a Navy town. There is a lot of Navy people here and just military because there's like an air base. Just, there's a lot of military people in this area. Therefore, any sort of military news, it's pretty big news here. There's also a couple of shipyards. That's also a really big deal if there's something that happens at a shipyard. That's pretty big because there are multiple here. Anything happens on a Navy base or if anything is military related, that's important. I'm going to make that high in my show on priority. Um, when I interned in Tennessee, it was in a city where a lot of railroad stuff was kind of important because there were tracks all across the city. So if there was something that had to do with trains or railroads, that was kind of bigger news and kind of important to put in the A block. So knowing your market is something that if you're just starting out somewhere and you move somewhere completely new and you know nothing about the area like me when I moved here, it's a good thing to talk with some of your fellow coworkers about, your boss, manager, whoever about, your executive producer is gonna be pretty good at telling you what's important to talk to them about it. Just say like, hey, what are the big things here? What do I need to know is always gonna lead if something happens with it. Also, if you're interviewing for a job, that's a great question to ask in the interview. Like, hey, what is a big deal in this market? What do you guys cover a lot? What do you, what's your like big stories that you're usually covering? All right next, I kind of mentioned this, teases, but you're probably not gonna write great teases at first. Um, it takes a while before you get to the point where you could probably like write a solid tease 50% of the time, and then it's gonna take you a little bit longer before you can write a solid tease like 90% of the time. A good thing to keep in mind with teases is don't make them too short um, because video does play over. Oh, that's another thing with teases. You have to tease something that has video. If you are trying to tease something that only has a full screen, that's not gonna work because you need something with a visual element besides just a full screen to play. But it's important to know how to pick a good teasable story and then it's important to know how to actually write the tease well. If something has super interesting, outstanding video, that might be a good thing to tease because you can kind of show a little bit of that video and then that might get people interested. Again, if it's something that's like really important with your market, that's a good thing to tease because it's gonna get a lot of people interested. The thing that I was taught is you wanna have like a prompt and a promise which is it's like a two-step, two-sentence structure to teases. Like, like an example would be something like, the Super Bowl is right around the corner coming up. We'll show you how to throw the best Super Bowl party to impress your friends and not break the bank. That's not like an amazing example because that was right off the top of my head. But the sentence of Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is right around the corner is your prompt. And then your promise is that you're going to show the audience how to throw an awesome Super Bowl party on a budget. That's sort of the two sentence structure of a prompt and a promise. You don't have to make every tease like that, of course, but that's just what I was taught. And I think it is helpful, especially if you're trying to tease something and you're just like, I don't know 
what to tease with this. Just having that structure in your head can be helpful. Another thing I've learned is there's no such thing as over communication when it comes to the newsroom. Usually what happens if there is a problem or an issue in a show, it's a lack of communication on somebody's end. Not always, there can be other reasons for something to go wrong, but a lot of the times if you start looking back at what the issue was, you can sort of trace it back to somebody wasn't informed of something and then someone else didn't know about it. Communication fell short and that is what was the problem. So over communicate, that's fine. That's better than under communicating. That could be as simple as seeing kind of a weird name in a script that you're writing and just telling your anchor like, hey, heads up in D5, there's kind of a weird name. You might want to look over it. You might just want to prepare yourself. Another thing, if you're first starting your job as a news producer, I recommend asking around for the best place to find stories, asking other producers like, hey, where do you go when you're looking for stories? Because there's gonna be probably a handful of resources that your manager is going to tell you about when you first start, but there might also be other places that you just don't know about. For example, there's a sister station usually kind of nearby for most people. They could have access to the information from the sister station and use that. For us, we have one in Richmond. So if something happens in Richmond that's kind of a big deal, we can use their content and on our station, but that's not something that was like relayed to me when I first started. And the only reason I knew about it was because I knew about that system of sister stations and using their content from the station that I interned at. But if I hadn't interned and found out about that, I would have come in to this station just not having any idea that you can use other sister stations information. There's also just going to be maybe some random spots that you just didn't know about that have good local information. Next thing, uh, local is king. What I mean by that is local is always the most important thing. Not always. Local is a majority of the time the most important thing to start your shows with. Your strong suit as a local TV station is your local coverage. There's always going to be kind of important national stuff going on and of course it's important for you to put it in your newscast somewhere if there's something national that affects your local audience but if it's a local story national news sites aren't going to cover it. If you really wanted like if you wanted to see some coverage of the election, you can tune into CNN, Fox, NSNBC, you know, like you can go to the national network stations and watch that kind of stuff, but they're not going to show you the stuff that's happening in your town. That is what local stations can do that national cannot, unless something like really big national happened in your town and like CNN comes to your town, which actually they usually don't. They usually just take the content that the local stations have shot and upload it to the national databases. They don't usually come unless there's like something really big happening. You always wanna to try to focus and get as much local content in your shows as possible because that is going to interest the most people in that area as opposed to just a bunch of national stories. Of course, like I said, national is important to put in there, but as much local as you possibly can is always a good thing. Next, creativity is going to be your best tool to make the most interesting shows to watch. As a journalist, it can be kind of difficult to be creative in a lot of ways because you have the restrictions of the facts and trying to be as unbiased as possible. And a lot of that is going to cut into your creativity and what you're able to do. But you can still be creative as a producer just in the way that you format your show, you can utilize your entire studio. You're gonna have different monitors in there. You can have different ways that you can have your anchors interact. You can have different ways to set up your stories, utilizing your graphics, utilizing video, utilizing the different, like I said, spots and monitors in your uh, studio. Just to keep things interesting so that it's not planned and so that it's kind of interesting for the viewer to watch. It can be very, very easy for producers to get in this sort of like systematic way of doing things. And you kind of have to fight, especially after you've been doing it for a while and you get comfortable, and you kind of have to fight against that and be like, no, what's something that I can do different this time? What's something that we can try, something new? Now, this video is probably already really long, so I'm sorry. So I'll say one more thing and then I will stop. The last thing that I think is really important, not only for producers, but anybody going into journalism, especially live TV, is to just be okay with things changing at the last second. I can't even tell you the amount of times that I have finished a show, it's ready, I got 15 minutes before we go live on air, and something happens. Uh, usually, usually it is a shooting. I don't know why everyone shoots everyone here. I wish they would stop, but they're not going to. They're gonna continue to shoot each other for whatever reason. I'll be going into my 10 o'clock show. It'll be 9.45 and we get a report of a shooting. 
And then I have to completely change the top of my A block to a breaking new stinger. I have to write up that shooting. I have to make a little like graphic for it. And then I have to kill some other type of story in order to make up the time that I just filled in with that. I have to kill something else. And then I usually have to bounce out some other stuff to sort of like make the flow okay. Like you just, you gotta change things. Things happen last second or stories fall through at the last second something goes wrong and you just have to figure out what to do to fix it like that and you don't really have a lot of time to figure it out because it's live tv you got a hard deadline and you have to fill that time in the show regardless of if things fall through so that can be kind of stressful and a lot of people don't handle that kind of stuff very well they get very high strung and very stressed out if that is your personality i definitely recommend trying to find a way to like um, you know, like inner peace or whatever you need to find in order to be able to just focus and get it done. I don't know if that's really a tip as much as just a thing to know about. If you're going into live TV, expect there to be some stressful situations that pop up every now and then or, you know, all the time. Anyway, like I said, this is getting kind of long, so I'm going to cut it off here. Um, but I do have a plethora of other tips. If anybody is interested in those, I can make other videos like this. Um, just going into in-depth stuff about news producing. If you have any questions on this topic, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, and if you have any ideas on videos, anything that you want to see, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. And if you liked this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to me if you would like to. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.